All right, listen up, Vision and Flash and Kitty Pride. I know that you can phase through stuff, but you're explaining it all wrong. All this talk about vibrations and densities and mutations, that's not how phasing works. That's not how any of that works. No, no, no. If you want to walk through walls, you have to go quantum. First, let's establish what superheroes say they are doing when they phase through objects. Oh, oh, I don't feel good. The Vision passes through objects, at least canonically, by changing his density. This is apparently what allows him to pass through enemies, let enemies pass through him, and how Scarlet Witch made him heavy enough to fall through the floor in Captain America Civil War. Kitty Pride from the X-Men is the girl who can walk through walls, and she can stay one step ahead of the juggernaut female dog by, quote, shifting her atoms through the spaces between the atoms of the object through which she is moving, whatever that means. Finally, the Flash, who learns that he can phase through objects by... If you vibrate at the natural frequency of air, your body, your cells, will be in a state of excitement that should allow you to phase right through that wall. Okay, sure. But why don't some of his clothes come off too? All of them, ooh. There are problems with these explanations that I think are all trying to basically say exactly the same thing. Sorry, Captain Sweater Vest, but changing your density has nothing to do with phasing through objects. The Vision's volume isn't changing, so he must be radically decreasing his mass. But even a patch of stuff with the least mass in the universe, like a patch of empty space, doesn't phase through objects. Particles in the vacuum of space don't just phase into the International Space Station. A space phase! Kitty Pride wouldn't just be able to move her atoms through the spaces in between the atoms of another solid object, either. The reason why you can't just push two solids through each other is from a balance between the repulsion of their electrons and the attraction from the van der Waals forces between those electrons. So even if you change the orientation of the atoms in the solid, you still have two solids that will ultimately repel each other and not go through. Should, can, you, can you stop it? <laughs> Lastly, the flash. Well, I've heard this explanation since like grade school. My pinky doesn't look quite right, does it? Anyway, you, you just can't vibrate yourself fast enough to phase through another object like the Flash says that he can. Do you know how fast electrons, which is why two solids don't pass through each other in the first place, do you know how fast electrons wiggle? They wiggle fast enough to circle the Earth in 13 seconds. They already twerk this hard and they aren't passing through objects. I'm not passing through other objects. So what do you think, just increasing your speed a little bit it's gonna let you do, Barry. So if all those explanations are more fiction than science, how do superheroes phase through objects? It's not vibration or density or even positioning, it's quantum mechanics. In physics as we experience it, you have to give a ball enough energy to get over a hill or through a hill if you wanna move it around the hill. But in quantum mechanics, it's a little bit different. The ball is no longer like a particle, it's more like a probability, meaning that it has a small chance to be found on the other side of the hill without enough energy to get over the hill. So sometimes in quantum mechanics, the ball will just pop to the other side. This phenomenon is called quantum tunneling. In this case, think of the ball not like a particle, but more like a wave. If the ball is more like a wave of probabilities and you move it close to a barrier, as you can see, there is some small chance in a probabilistic sense that you will find the ball on the other side of the barrier, even though it doesn't have enough energy to go over it or through it in the classic sense if the barrier is not too big. We know quantum tunneling so well that we even use it to power some of our microscopes. So if Dr. Christmas Face is able to control the quantum state of every particle in his body, then there is some chance that his whole body could be found on on the other side of a wall or on the other side or through a bad guy. And then if he was a quantum superhero, he'd be able to make this chance effectively 100%. And it'd be like Dr. Manhattan, but with way more clothes on. Hashtag quantum D. The same logic applies to both the Flash and Kitty Pride. If they were able to control the quantum states of every particle in their bodies, then they could phase them through objects and walls and bad guys and other stuff. I'm not even the first person to come up with this answer. Both Spiridon Michalakis, who helped me with the Giant Man episode, and James Kikalios, who wrote The Physics of Superheroes, also just apparently nerdy Greek dudes, came up with quantum tunneling as well. And although the control of quantum states in this way is complete fiction, the principles are complete fact. 
because science. Oh, 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 I'm stuck in the floor. Oh, call a physicist. Thank you so much for watching. At Renegade Liar has a question. How does Cyclops from the X-Men see? Shouldn't the blast interfere with the function of the eye? Uh, well, yeah, I'm not really sure how he produced those blasts from the eye, but how he sees, think of it this way, it seems like his glasses, although they should be inside of his eyes for this to work, are probably kind of like a polarizing lens. So they are oriented in a certain way so that a kind of light only makes it out, a certain kind of light. So not like if you wear polarizing sunglasses and you look at your car dashboard, for example, tilt them and the car dashboard disappears. That's because the polarizing filter doesn't let certain angles and directions of light through so you can't see them. So I'd imagine that his glasses kind of work like that, only letting certain wavelengths of light in and out. And that's why when he takes them off, uh, there's a big blast. I think that Juggernaut is unstoppable, female dog, uh, for the same reason why no one can lift up Thor's hammer. I think he can change his mass and that he can have variable momentum. And momentum is just uh, a quantity measured by mass multiplied by its velocity. And his velocity isn't changing. He just, he gets up to running speed and he kind of just runs at a constant speed and you can't stop him. So if velocity isn't changing, then his mass has to be changing to increase his momentum such that he will collide with and go through objects. So if he's changing his mass, maybe he's emitting some kind of graviton particle, which we've yet to discover, but it's supposedly supposed to manipulate gravity, and that's what I think uh, makes Thor's hammer work. But in the comics, it's shown that he can't lift Thor's hammer. So, future episode? <laughs>